Hey, hey, this is Smiles here with another classic game review. Today, let's take a look back at Mario Kart Double Dash, the fourth installment in the Mario Kart series released for the GameCube back in 2003. If you couldn't tell already, the main feature of Mario Kart Double Dash was that you can have two drivers. While one character drives, the other could throw items at opponents. The idea of having two drivers allows you to strategically hold your items. While receiving an item, you can hit Z to switch your driver and save the item for a later time. Double item blocks are also introduced, so both drivers can receive an item at the same time. However, having a character in the back has its flaws. You might lose your item if you're knocked over. Furthermore, your character in the back might struggle to get back up, wasting time before you can switch drivers again. Also, the ability to have a banana constantly behind you is gone. It was a nice defensive mover I missed from other Mario Kart games, but at least they brought it back after Double Dash. You can also play Double Dash in co-op. In co-op, you can hit other racers and steal their items. You also get a rocket start if you both do the boost at the beginning of the race. Like single player, you can easily switch drivers by hitting Z simultaneously. Mario Kart Double Dash allows co-op with any number of players, so you can play co-op even in verse and battle modes. The biggest change to items in this game is the addition of special items. Each character shares a special item with their partner. For instance, Mario and Luigi share the fireball, while Wario and Waluigi can use a bomb on. If you want a bigger variety of special items, it's best to pick non-partner characters. These special items aren't really balanced. If you find yourself in first place, Peach and Daisy special will rarely make an appearance. Bowser Jr.'s and Diddy Kong's special item almost always appear in first place, and thanks to the massive size, can easily mow down the competition. King Boo and Petey Piranha have access to all the special items, which, make, which makes them completely broken. Granted, Petey's giant head is a huge handicap, but still, Despite its balanced flaws, Mario Kart Double Dash is one of the most enjoyable Mario Kart games in the series. An important aspect of any Mario Kart game is the track design, and Double Dash surely doesn't disappoint. There are many cool features that add fun twists to races like DK's Cannon Barrel, Wriggler Bus, and the fire spitting Bowser statue to name a few. I wouldn't say that the graphics blew me away like in Super Mario Sunshine, but the tracks were quite beautiful in their own right. You just can't help but be in awe as you drive down Rainbow Road. There are also plenty of hidden shortcuts in this game, some that don't even require a mushroom to access. With so many hidden secrets and features, it's hard to name a track that I didn't like. Another welcome feature was the change in drifting. You might notice that sparks fly from your wheels while drifting. If you quickly toggle the joystick, the sparks change colors to orange. After you change the sparks to blue and let go, you get a small boost. The drift mechanic was easy enough so any player could pick it up, but tough enough to execute so it couldn't be abused. Double Dash featured the most battle modes of any Mario Kart game. Besides the Unizual Balloon Battle, you can also compete in Shine Thief, where you try to hold the Shine Sprite until the counter hits zero, and Bomb on Blast, where you use bomb bombs to blow each other up. I personally enjoyed the battle modes in Double Dash more than other Mario Kart games. They were a nice getaway from the usual races. I still can't believe it's been 10 years since Double Dash came out. I remember reading about its E3 review in magazines and picking up my copy back in 7th grade. While there are definitely balanced flaws, it doesn't take away from the amazing track design and gameplay mechanics the GameCube installment had to offer. I enjoyed punching hundreds of hours into races, and it's always a joy to revisit quite possibly one of my favorite Mario Kart games.